Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'd like to share with you a case that was referred to me. It was an open globe injury, corneal laceration, lens involvement. The lens was removed and the patient had a vitrectomy, uh, but there was also a traumatic medriasis. So the patient's here for a secondary IOL placement with the Amani technique. And then I performed the single pass four throw pupiloplasty technique popularized by Dr. Amar Agarwal's group. So here I'm making my various incisions for intraocular manipulation, as well as for my AC maintainer, and as well as here the uh, contralateral in inferior incision so that I can uh, externalize the leading haptic for the Amani technique. I'm making my marks um, at the limbus, making sure they're 180 degrees away to ensure good centration for the lens. I'm marking about two to two and a half millimeters posterior to the limbus, and then two millimeters uh, adjacent to that. I'm filling the anterior chamber with the dispersive viscoelastic, and then I'm putting my Lewicki AC maintainer. I'm making my main incision, the three millimeter keratome blade superiorly. I place my micrograspers through the inferior incision, and I'm going to grab the leading haptic uh, with the micrograspers here, I'm trying to use my non-dominant hand to hold the uh, the shooter, and I'm, I'm having a difficult time supinating my hand, and so the lens actually flips upside down. And I'm doing this because this is a patient's right eye, and uh, the patient has a big nose. And so I tried to do it this way, but that was really a little bit of a challenge. But nonetheless, I was able to flip the lens back into proper orientation. And then I began bending my needles. The right needle I bend so it faces towards me, and the left needle faces uh, away from me. More dispersive viscoelastic used to coat the cornea, and I use a cotton tip to fixate the eye as I go ahead and uh, pierce the sclera two and a half millimeters back, and I'm uh, tunneling about two millimeters and then diving down towards the nerve and then rotating the needle so I can see it. I'm using micrograspers to grasp the haptic four millimeters back, and because of the angle of the bevel, it's able to dock uh, fairly easily. I use a hemostat to disengage the syringe from the needle. I stab the sclera with the left needle at the mark two and a half millimeters posterior to the limbus, and I tunnel about two millimeters before diving down towards the nerve. I use micrograspers to grasp the haptic, and because of the angle of the bevel, I'm able to dock it fairly easily. Even though I haven't gotten it in very deeply, I'm able to secure it. Again, that's because the bevel is facing away from me, and it's the C-shaped configuration of the haptic allows it to be secured very easily. I like to perform a sequential externalization of the haptic, first one side and then the other, and I gently pull as I go. I try not to make sure too much of the haptic is externalized, and I push it back, and then uh, use cautery to create a little bulb, and then I'm pushing the bulbs in and flush to the sclera, and you can see that the lens is well-centered. The next step is to deal with the traumatic medriasis with the pupiloplasty. I'm using micrograspers to assess how much iris tissue I have. There was no tissue loss, but I'm just pulling just to see how much I'm able to stretch the iris uh, on each side uh, very gently. And this just helps me determine how much tissue I'm working with and how elastic the tissue is. So I have a lot of experience performing the seeps or sliding knot technique for pupil reconstruction and pupiloplasty, but not as much with this technique, but it still begins the same way you wanna pass a tenoproline on a CF4 needle through an incision. It's important to make sure that the needle is not incarcerated in any coronal tissue because if it is, you're not going to be able to suture it because it's going to get snagged in the incision. And so I like to perform a little wiggle uh, maneuver. And this simple move makes sure that the needle is free. And then I'm using micrograspers to guide the needle through the iris on the right side. And then on the left side, I like to use a cannula to guide the needle through the iris and then externalize through the corneal incision. The cannula actually helps to make sure that there's no corneal fibers incarcerated. The bond hook is placed through the right paracentesis and is used to hook the suture that's actually between the iris on the left side and going out of the left corneal wound. As the bond hook pulls the suture out, it creates a nice large loop. I like to grasp in my left hand the portion of the loop that is connected to the iris. And then this is where you perform your four throws. This is one, two, three, four throws. In fact, I think you could probably do even more, um, but not less than four throws. And then you go ahead and uh, grasp the suture, the free end suture that's on the right side, and then you're gonna grasp the free end suture on the left side. And as you pull, the suture slides into the incision. This, again, this is just like the suture sliding knot technique, but 
because there are four throws, believe it or not, um, you don't have to make any more throws. And then you cut uh, each end of the suture with uh, intraocular scissors. And you can see that the suture is holding the iris very nicely, even though there's some tension, and that's without any additional throws. So this technique does work. Again, you're gonna perform the same technique, uh, needle through the right paracentesis, making sure it's not incarcerated into the corneal fibers, cannula through the left paracentesis, the needle stabs through the iris, and then through the cannula, and then the cannula guides the needle out. And you can see the iris is secured uh, with suture on, on two points. A bond hook is used through the right paracentesis, and you're hooking the suture uh, on the contralateral side. And uh, as you pull that, you can see that there is a loop that's externalized from the right paracentesis. Again, I like to grab with my left forcep the portion of the suture that's attached to the iris. And then you're gonna see, again, four throws, four throws, and then you're gonna grasp the free end of the suture on the right side with the right forcep. You're gonna release with the left hand and grasp the free hand on the left hand with the left forcep. As you pull, the loop slides into the eye in the sleep or sliding knot fashion. But again, because there are four throws, once you cinch it down, it is locked. You're gonna take micro scissors to cut the suture on each side. And again, you can see that the suture is indeed holding the, uh, the iris together. The pupil is still a little bit large, so I'm performing the same technique. Again, uh, on the right side, the needle is going through a paracentesis, ensuring that there is no corneal fibers incarcerating the needle. Uh, you pass, stab through the iris on the right side, and on the left side, use a cannula to guide the needle first through the iris and then through the cannula. You externalize the cannula, which exposes the iris. Using the bond hook, you're hooking, again, going through the right, paracentesis hooking the contralateral uh, suture and then externalizing on the right. You're getting another loop. Again, holding the loop that's connected to the iris with the left hand. I'm, I'm making four throws. I actually think that even if you accidentally put one extra throw, I don't think it will harm the technique. Again, I think it's important not to use less than four throws. Um, so now I'm pulling on either side, and as I pull the suture, the free ends on each side, you can see the iris comes down very nicely, and it's nice and secure. I'm gonna cut the uh, suture with the micro forceps, and as you can see, the pupil is uh, really nice and round. I'm gonna try to go after uh, that little bit of a iris uh, defect uh, right there at the very end. Again, very similar technique. Again, I pass stab with the needle, on the right side iris, but then I like to stab the other portion of the iris uh, using the cannula. You can see uh, there's been a lot of manipulation so far, and so this iris is a little bit stretched out, but that's okay. I'm able to internalize it and then use a bond hook to grasp the contralateral uh, portion of the suture, and then I'm going to externalize it again through the right paracentesis. Again, once I have that loop, I'm going to hold the loop with my left forcep with the, on the portion that is attached to the iris. And then I'm gonna make my four throws and then uh, grasp the free end on the right side of the suture with the right forcep. And then I'm gonna grasp the free end of the suture on the left side uh, with my left forcep. And as I pull, you'll be able to see again that the uh, iris defect is closes very nicely. Again, this is a really essentially a modified Seepser sliding knot technique, but again, the novelty is the four throw technique, which doesn't require any more throws and it locks the suture uh, very effectively. So I think this is an, a nice example of single pass four throw pupilplasty technique. Even though the iris was very taut and I had to stretch it to bring it down, you can say even though it's on tension, the sutures are holding the iris very nicely. It's nice and round. And most importantly, if you're familiar with the seeps or sliding knot technique, this is not much of a learning curve for you because the maneuver is fairly straightforward and familiar. And this is a very efficient way to perform pupiloplasty. Thank you for your attention.